Hey, what's up? If you're trying to apply for the Permesso de Sejorno and need to fill out this kit and having troubles and a bit anxious about how to fill it out and trying to find information how to do it on the internet, in English, it's kind of difficult. Well, I was in the same situation and after a bunch of research, I am doing this video to show you how. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. As I unpack this document, please note that I'm not an advisor and all my words are just from my experience only. I do not have any qualifications in order to teach you or tell you how to do this. However, this is my experience and I'm able to share that with you. In this kit, you're gonna find these papers. You're gonna find a receipt, which you're gonna need later. You're gonna find module one. Here it is. Then there is also module two much thinner and then there's a bunch of these papers which help you fill out uh, module one and module two so that you don't get lost so we need to get these use these papers as a reference for what is written here let's go ahead and start with module one so this is the module it says over here module one both of these modules should be filled in with a black pen but i'm going to use a pencil first fill it in and then after i'm sure i've made no mistakes i'm going to use a black pen to write over and then erase the pencil the first thing it says is ministero dell'interno al signor quistore di and here you must write the city from which you are applying for so it could be rome milan venice let's type in roma so Roma and then here Silla la provincia and here you can see this little small b so we get this helper guide and we look at b over here and it says vedere nella tabella allegata numero uno province so look in the table that says number one that says provinces tabella allegata numero uno right and then here we have the provincia if we're looking for Rome we find Roma and it's RM. So Roma, RM, and that's what we put in here. RM. Next over here, it says Marca di Bolo of 16 euros. It is a sticker that you can get from your local tabaccaria, which looks like this. You don't stick it on just yet. You bring the sticker with you to the post office and they will stick it on. Because if you've made a mistake and you need to redo this module, it'll be difficult to unstick the sticker from this module and stick it on to the new one that you'll have to redo. Moving on to section number one, which is your personal data. Here you must fill in your surname and your name. As you can see here, it says surname and there's a little A over here. If you look at our little uh, helper guide over here, A is riportare il dato come scritto sul passaporto o documento equivalente. It just means that you must write your name exactly as it is written in your passport or any document which you have. Next, the form is going to ask us what kind of a permesso are we applying for. Rilascio is issuance. For the first time, you're applying for a permesso. Rinnovo is renewal. Aggiornamento means an update on the information on your permesso. For example, if you have changed your name or your address or have children. Duplicato means duplicate in case you have lost your permesso di giorno. And conversione, which means conversion. If you're planning to renew your work permit, which is different to the type which you already have, for example, if you have a study permit and wish to apply for a work permit, then this is the option for you. You will need to mark the appropriate option with an X. Next, you're asked if you want a permesso de sejorno or a carta de sejorno. The difference between the permesso de sejorno is a temporary work permit and a carta de sejorno is a permanent one. In Codice Tipologie Permesso Carta di Sejorno in Richiesta, we must turn to the second detached table to see which code corresponds with our motive. For example, tourism, study, working for yourself or working for an employer, etc. For example, let's say we are applying for a work permit while we are searching for a job. Then we write 05, Attesa Occupazione. And if the only thing that you need to do with your Permesso di Sejorno is update your photograph, then you can mark an X and number 17 instead. If you are already in the position of an existing and expiring permesso de sejorno, please enter its information here. Otherwise, leave this section blank. Section 2, the last section of this page, should actually be compiled at the end of the entire application. But let's go over it in any case. 
indicate which modules have been filled in. Here you can write OR01 for one module or 02 for both modules, although it is kind of redundant because you are then asked to indicate which models you've compiled and you have to press an X on one or both of the modules. At number 25, you'd need to indicate how many total pages you are submitting, including the amount of pages in the modules and any printed or scanned photos you have added. You can see why you'd want to do this last. In number 26, if you also submitted on behalf of your children, you must indicate how many children you have submitted for. And in the end, please do not fill in the date nor sign this document as that must be done when you go to the post office. Congratulations, you're now one step closer to completing your Permesso application. And as we flip to the next page, I just want to say, don't worry, there's probably going to be a lot of sections you can skip depending on your Permesso type. So let's go on to the next page and section number three. Data Anagrafici requires you to submit some personal information, the first one being your Codice Fiscale. You should already have one. If not, you can go to the Agenzia dell'Entrata website and download a one-page module and send it to your local office and you should receive it within five days. 32 is your married status, letter A for single or B for married. In 33, indicate your gender, M for male, F for female, in 34, fill in your birthday. In 35, you must indicate where you were born. In 36, your current citizenship. The code for all the countries can be found in the attached table 3. You also need to indicate whether or not you are a refugee and the city in which you were born. In section 4, you'll need to indicate whether you're applying with your passport or a different type of document. And if so, you'll need to specify which kind of document by using the table in the fourth attachment. If your document type is not listed, you can write it in altro, otherwise leave this blank. Next, enter the number of your ID document and the date until which it is valid. And only if you have selected other type of document do you write who it was issued by, by following the table in the attachment number 5. If this is your first time applying for Parmesa de Sejorno, you should have entered the country by a visa. Please enter the information of your visa in section number 5. If you do not have a visa, you can leave this blank. Page number 3, section 6, is required only to be filled out by a stateless case or a refugee seeking for a travel document. Section number 7 asks you to share your contact details, including your home address, email address and telephone number. While section number 8 asks where would you like to receive your letter with the raccomandata and if it is the same as the above, you do not need to fill this section in. Section number 9 needs to be filled in only by those who wish to acquire a permanent residence or a conversion of the permesso de soggiorno for other than family reasons. If this is your first time applying, then you can skip this entire section. Here you'll need to show a certificate issued by the Comune or by the ASL, certifying that you have adequate lodging. Also, 94 and onwards, they will ask you to indicate any other places where you have lived during the past six years. The next question this module asks you is if your application is correlated to either your spouse or your family. And unless you are specifically applying as a spouse or a child, the answer to these questions will be no. Sections 10 through 12 should be filled out only by those who are applying for permanent residence. And it asks to know if you have anybody living with you, if you have a spouse, children or somebody else and how many of them. In section 11, you're able to fill out the spouse information and in section 12, the children. If, however, you live alone or do not plan on getting a permanent residence, you can skip this part altogether and move on to module 2. All right, we finished this module in under 10 minutes. Now let's move on to module number 2. This one should be filled out if you work and make money in Italy. If you don't, there is no need to compile this module. Just like in Module 1, you must indicate the city and the province from which you are applying. Then you'll need to indicate if you are being employed and have an employer, 
or if you are self-employed or perhaps something else. In the case that you are being employed, you must select one of the following. If your contract is unlimited, it has a predefined ending date, if it's seasonal or lasts for X amount of months. If it's none of the above, specify in point 12 and enter the amount of days that you're working for. If you have selected Lavoro Autonomo or self-employed, you need to select if you are the owner or perhaps a partner in a business, or if you are a freelancer or run a business which does not require registration, such as Fitanza Turistico, or other. In Mansione Svolta, you must enter your work title, for example, factory worker, IT specialist, maid, etc. Fill in section 2 and 3 only if you have selected Lavoro Subordinato. In section 2, you'll be asked to make a choice between Persona Juridica and Persona Fisica. If you're working for a corporation, joint stock company, a factory, etc., select Persona Juridica and enter the company information. If, however, you're employed by an individual business, you must select Persona Fisica and enter the personal information of your employer. Section 3 is designed to collect information about your work contract. Fill out the section only if you have selected Lavoro Subordinato. Here you need to state how the contract was registered. If you physically went and registered your contract at Sportello Unico di Immigrazione, you need to indicate the province and date in which it was submitted. If, however, you registered your contract by post with a raccomandata, you need to write the province and the number of the registered letter and the date in which it was sent. Section number four is reserved for Lavoro Autonomo. If you are self-employed, freelancer, or have your own company, you must write the name of your company in Dimensione Sociale. If you have a partita IVA, then enter it in here. Otherwise, enter the Codice Fiscale. Fill in the following information if you're registered with IMPS. And below that, it says Iscrizione Albi Registri, which means the category of your profession, such as architect, IT, art, hospitality, etc. And finally, the date in which your company first registered. Moving on to section number five, which would be the last section for most, which is income. If you can demonstrate an annual income, mark number 52 and write the gross income number next to it. Number 54 asks which was the last year in which you have declared your income tax. It could be this year, last year, or if you've never declared them at all, leave it blank. You then have four options to say which kind of tax you were declaring. Persone fisiche, società di persone, società di capitale, or enti non commerciale. If your employer subtracts the tax from your payslip and pays it for you, then you can mark 59 CUD. If you receive a busto paga or bolletino imps, you can mark one of the two and write how much money you receive per month. And if you have just started your company and you haven't declared your taxes yet, you can mark number 63. Fill in the last section number 6 only if you are unemployed and are registered with Centro per il Piego. Here you will need to write in the date in which you applied at the office, the province, city and the district in which you applied. And of course, unless you are enlisted in Centro per il Piego, do not fill any of this information in. Now, it only took us 15 minutes to go through these two forms, but I know the process can be very complicated, especially that you need to gather a lot of documents, which can be a little bit cumbersome. And speaking of documents, you must also add a few documents in the package, namely a photocopy of your passport and all of its pages, uh, your permesso di soggiorno. They must come in an A4 uh, format, uh, kind of like this. Uh, they don't need to be color, but it always helps, I suppose, for the reviewer to uh, see that you paid some attention to it. And um, depending on your premise de soggiorno, you're going to have uh, this file over here. If you open it, there's going to be a list of all the different permesos which you can apply for. And each one of these is going to have a list of things which you need to attach with your submission. Now, um, some of them are different, I can't go through all of them, but that is definitely something you should have a look to see what you must include when submitting your um, permesso di soggiorno in this envelope. Uh, I don't usually fill out these uh, forms just in case the price is different, so. but nonetheless, here is a price breakdown. Now, the base permesso is going to cost you 30 euros and 46 cents. 
Stepping up from that, if you have a permesso that lasts from three months up to a year, it is going to be a 40 euros extra, so it's 70, 46. From one year to two years, it's going to be 50 euros extra, so a total of 80 euros and 46 cents. And if you want to stay for more than two years, or if you're a worker of a corporation, then the price is going to be 130 euros and 46 cents take this uh, unfilled to the post office and allow them to fill this in and also all of this just to be sure they know what to do. And finally when you have all your um, papers that you need, all your documents, including your modules and your uh, prints, take all of them together, count how many pages, one, two, three, then the module, eight pages and all these together and at the end Right over here, uh, however many pages you're submitting inside, that's how many pages you put over here in uh, this uh, foil over here. And then uh, you can submit. You can take this to the post office, uh, give it to the uh, clerk at the post office, bring your passport, very important, and um, yeah, they'll take it from there. One last thing I want to say is that I know this process is very difficult and a lot of you may still have questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link in the description below a few files which I think you might find helpful and please use the comments below as a forum to ask questions where other people can answer. I will do my best but I don't guarantee any answers. As I said, I'm just doing this for myself. This is not my job. I saw that there was not enough information out there on the internet so I created this video and I hope it helped you.